Hey, you. Huh? What's that? Hey, uh, buddy, you're in my chair. Okay, okay, I'll move. You move this guy. All right, if you guys have been watching the channel for a little while, you know we like to do these little visual gags. And a few of you were asking how we did them, and I thought it might be fun to do kind of a behind the scenes thing. Um, I'm by no means an expert on visual effects. Uh, with that being said, uh, we're gonna start with one of the uh, visual effects we did in the last episode. And as a bonus, I think we'll go ahead and throw this one in too. So let's get to it. All right, so this is the scene we're gonna go over. Uh, I'll just play it for you once so you can see what we did here. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are we, barbarians? Well, yeah, but... I use the scissors. Uh, Jeez. Those work really well. Yeah, they're not bad. They're made by Fisker. Yeah? You know those crazy fins. Is it fins? fins? Finish? I don't know. Very nice. Yeah, that'll do. So this was a pretty simple effect to do. It didn't take a lot of time either. In fact, most of the time when I'm doing these uh, visual effects, I, I try and pick things that I know aren't gonna take a lot of time because I just don't have a lot of time to, to add to the, uh, the overall project. In fact, this one was so simple, it only took one camera shot. You would think I would have had to do like a before and after of this being cut and not cut. The image you're looking at right here, it is actually cut already. If I turn off this nested layer, you can see it's cut here. If I turn off this back layer, it's, I duplicated a part of the steel that wasn't cut and moved it over. So you see, that's just, that's just a piece pulled from right here and I just slid it over. Now to get this mask was a little bit difficult. So we'll start with this base layer. Um, this is just masked off. Now I have it masked past the edges of the steel a little bit here because I want the transition between this and what's behind it to be a little fuzzy. So the mask itself has a bit of a, a feather to it, but I needed the edges of them to still be sharp. So I created, I actually created two sets of masks. The second set here is just masked off on the edges with a sharp line. This is kind of a trick to get fuzzy edges on one side and sharp edges on another. Uh, and then at that point, it was pretty simple. I created uh, what they call, I think, a power mat in the industry. It's just a, it's just a mask layer that moves um, with uh, your subject. And I did this by hand. So I'll animate the mask to reveal the layer beneath. And I just did this by hand. So it was pretty simple. You just reveal that layer. And uh, I didn't spend a whole lot of time in this. It could be a whole lot cleaner than it is, uh, but the scale and the and how fast you see this scene go by, I think it worked just fine. If you want to see the unedited clip from beginning to end, steel's already cut. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are we, barbarians? Yeah, okay. I use the scissors. I just run the scissors along the cut already. <laughs> Some terrible acting as well. That's it for that one. Let me show you how I, uh, how I did the scene from this episode. Okay, this scene is probably just about as simple and it uses kind of a similar technique with masking. Now, when you're doing twins or clones or whatever, the biggest thing about this is just to kind of plan your shot ahead so that there's not too much overlap. It's gonna save you a lot of work. Now this particular clip, I screwed up a few things. The timing wasn't quite right. Normally I'll try and have somebody stand in as the other me so that I am looking at the right place and I my speech takes the right amount of time in between. In this case, I didn't have anybody available and also because of the way the chair moves, I can't really do that and I'll try and show you why. So here's the original clip. So I sit down, I pretend I'm talking to nobody and I get out of the chair and walk out of frame. Now the important part about this is that my chair doesn't move at all. In fact, nothing in the scene can move between this shot and the next shot. So you'll see me walk by. I'll go ahead and change shirts real quick just for the effect. And I'll come in and I'll pretend like I'm talking to myself. Wait till he gets out of the chair and sits down. Now the hard part is to make sure that there's enough space in between me and the twin. And in fact, when I filmed this, there wasn't quite enough. So I had to make a few adjustments. You can see I come in, I talk, I get up, and I try and make this transition between these two look as quick as possible. I think that really sells the, the thing. As much interaction as you have between the two twins, uh, the more believable this is gonna be. 
So I wanted this to be close. However, I probably got it a little too close. These little cuts in here are slowed down 50%. Maybe you can see when I play it. I slow down there. So you can kind of tell there. I slow down here as well before I start talking. And that's just to get the timing exactly right. So you have to tweak things a little bit when you're doing it that way. Uh, but the overall effect worked just fine. Uh, let me show you the mask. So here I've masked off one layer versus the other. And this mask is actually gonna move as well. So the biggest thing is that the divider between these two masks always has to be between us. Um, if it overlaps one of us, it'll look like we're disappearing in space. So you'll see I'll move the mask as I come in, always keeping that line between us. And like I said, I wanted these really as close as they possibly could be to sell the effect. And even you can see here, um, I haven't moved the mask quite right, and you can see I kind of start to disappear a little bit. But in motion, you probably won't see it. It happens pretty quick. All right, that's going to do it for this one. Uh, if you guys like these little visual effects episodes, let me know and I'll do more of them. Uh, and if for anybody commenting that we're like somehow ripping off this old Tony, uh, we happen to love this old Tony. It's one of our favorite YouTube channels. So this is kind of more of a, an homage to him than anything else. Um, but by the off chance that Tony is watching this right now, um, take it as a challenge. We're going to up our game. We expect you to up your game too. All right, that's going to do it. See ya.